The next item of business is a Members' Business Debate on Motion 5389 in the name of Gillian Martin on Not on My Screen. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. And could I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons? I call on Gillian Martin to open the debate around seven minutes, please, Ms. Martin. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This book has been sitting on my table for about two months, and I knew I had to read it, but I kept on putting it off. I bought it the day after going to an event in this place run by the International Justice Mission about cyber sex trafficking. The Locust Effect details how violence and injustice perpetrates poverty, and it's a tough but an essential read. It's also a window into the incredible work of the International Justice Mission, as it's written by its founder, Gary Haugen. Hearing about children in developing countries being subjected to abuse and rape on live internet streaming paid for by the West's paedophiles makes me so angry. Angry and powerless. And I knew that this book contained reports of cyber sex trafficking and many other types of violence against the world's poorest people. These people get no justice from the courts and they get no protection from the police. The first case you'll read about details the horrific rape and murder of an eight-year-old Peruvian girl by a landlord who didn't even bother to hide the evidence because he knew his lawyer would bribe the police to destroy it. In the end, the police pinned the child's murder on another poor person, a boy with learning difficulties. They needed no evidence because their word was enough. And the real murderer wasn't even troubled by the police. This is endemic in developing countries. I read the first chapter and I couldn't read any further for weeks. The scale of the injustice makes me feel impotent. The task of helping these people seems too great, but read on I did and I emerged with hope because the IGM are working hard to tackle this injustice. Today's members debate cannot cover everything the International Justice Mission does to help the poor of the world combat violence and injustice. We'd need a debate every evening for at least two weeks to do that. So today's debate is on just one of their campaigns that deals with one element of their fight against violent crime, and that is Not On My Screen, which highlights the issue of cyber sex trafficking of children. I was able to walk away from that evening in the Parliament of hearing about these crimes and know that my kids are shielded from this horror. The poor children of the Philippines don't have that luxury. They're born into a life of violence and injustice. Children aged anywhere between 1 and 16 years old are subject to being abused live on the internet for paying customers. Paedophiles in our country, in wider Europe, in the States and beyond, are perpetrating child abuse with a credit card. The Philippines authorities receive upwards of 6,000 reports of crimes like this a month, and that's just in one country. This is big business throughout Asia. And as other developing countries get online, the problem is set to get far worse. Those at the event in Parliament heard how kids are taken from villages and kept prisoners in flats in urban areas and forced to do the most upsetting things imaginable by their captors. And other kids are used by their families and family friends to earn money from gang masters in their own homes. All you need is a mobile phone or a webcam and a frightened, coerced child. So even home is not a safe place for many children. One thing I can't forget that was said by Andrew Bevan, the Regional Development Executive of International Justice Mission in Scotland that evening, was this. He told us that kids will come in from playing in the streets at a time in their day when they know Europe logs on of an evening. That is when the demand arises. I cannot get that out of my mind. Europe logs on and the abuse starts thousands of miles away. And here's where the power to end this lies. We stop the purchase and we stop the practice. This information is very hard to hear, and believe me, I am having a great deal of difficulty talking about it today. But there are people doing something about it, and it's their work I want to draw attention to. The International Justice Mission worked to rescue these children from their lives of abuse, and in this country, they work with our law enforcement agencies to prosecute those who pay for that abuse, commissioning acts so distressing that decent people can barely imagine them. 
And whilst we in the UK have agencies like the Internet Watch Foundation worth, working terrifically hard to take down websites along with police forces across Scotland and Europe, they're taking down websites with, with stored images. Live streams are harder to detect and those who arrange them and those who pay for them operate in ways that make their apprehension extremely challenging. Some members may make mention of some case studies on children who've been rescued by the International Justice Mission, working with partners in the various countries. Their success in helping children escape this slavery, for that's what it is, that gives me hope. They are making a difference. But I also want to point out that it's not only children in developing countries. This abuse of children happens in Scotland too. Operation Latisse last year gathered evidence of more than 30 million indecent images of Scottish children over a six week period. And the police have said that this is only the tip of the iceberg. And as MSPs, this is something we cannot ignore. No constituency in Scotland is free from this. Every constituency has someone paying for abuse to happen to a child, either thousands of miles across the world or right on our doorstep. And anyway, it doesn't matter where the abuse is happening. It's happening because there is a market right here in Scotland, right here in the UK, right here in Europe. The fight against child sex abuse is at the front of the Scottish Government's National Action Plan on Child Sexual, sexual Exploitation and through the National Internet Safety Plan that was launched just in April 2017. But what more can we as members do? Well, put simply, we cannot shy away from talking about this dreadful phenomenon. And as hard as it is for us to talk about and listen to these terrible things, that's why I propose this debate. We must continue to speak out to ask questions of our internet providers, some who don't do enough to sh shut down these streams. And what about the payment exchange organi organisations? What are they doing to help the police identify these criminals? We need to be asking them these questions. We also need to empower and encourage our constituents to tell the police if they suspect anyone they know is accessing these images or live streams and to know enough to give them guidance on how they can do this anonymously. And we must ask our governments what they are doing to assist law enforcement agencies in tracking down those who perpetrate the trade and therefore perpetrate the abuse. Pick up the book. Don't leave the issue behind you as you leave an event or sit down after a chamber debate. Presiding officer, let's keep attention on the issue and support the work of the International Justice Mission and say very firmly, not on my screen. Speeches of around four minutes, please. Uh, Gordon Lindhurst will be followed by Kate Forbes. Deputy Presiding Officer, let me begin by thanking Gillian Martin in particular for bringing this debate to the Chamber, and she has expressed matters, if I may say so, very eloquently, something that is a very difficult topic, I think, for any of us to speak about, far less in any detail. And I would also like to think, thank the International Justice Mission for the good work it does worldwide, protecting vulnerable people and bringing criminals to justice. The Not On My Screen campaign has been set up to try and counter a growing problem that spans today's globalized, technology-driven world. The expansion of access to the internet undoubtedly brings benefits to the younger people that uh, when I was young, certainly, I would not even have been able to dream of. Now, we should welcome the benefits the internet brings and do what we can to make sure that children will benefit from this across the world. But the internet has also this terrible dark side that governments are very much still learning how to deal with. The internet spans borders, means that any action taken to tackle the more unfortunate consequences of it require true global cooperation across borders. In the UK, although we have no reason for complacency, we do have a reasonable, reasonably good track record of identifying illegal content, shutting it down, and pursuing justice for those who have suffered at the hands of this sort of terrible crime. The Internet Watch Foundation has reduced the prevalence of child sexual abuse content hosted in the UK from 18% in 1996 to less than 1% since 2003. And it has a number of operational partnerships across the world with police forces, government agencies, 
and also helping countries with lesser capability to remove unacceptable content. But as long as there continues to be a demand, including, unfortunately, in this country, criminals will continue, continue to be attracted to carrying out these horrific crimes. As the International Justice Mission briefing for today's debate says, it can often be seen, unfortunately, as a low-risk crime, easy to carry out with a potentially high financial reward. The Not On My Screen campaign contributes to an all-encompassing approach to tackle these crimes by tackling the demand for child abuse, abuse images in the first place. Um, the Keeping Children Safe Online debate, which I referred to earlier, concluded that everyone has a role to play in keeping children safe online. The Not On My Screen campaign reaffirms that principle, encouraging individuals to think about how their online behavior and those, that of those around them can have such devastating consequences for children and calling on individuals to take a stand against the crime. I hope that today's debate will help to spread this message so that we can seek to use the tools that are available. Tools such as Stop It Now Scotland, which can provide help to those worried about their own online behavior before it becomes even more of a problem as well as giving their friends, their family, or the family of children at risk of abuse a mechanism through which to express their concerns to authorities. This scheme should continue to be fully funded, as well as publicized widely as possible, so that concerning behavior can be stopped early. And I'd like to also briefly mention the important work being undertaken by the University of Edinburgh who are being funded by the NSPCC to carry out research looking at deterrence to viewing indecent images of children. To conclude, I hope we will all support the International Justice Mission campaign in the fight against child sexual abuse online. The internet is full of opportunities, but it must be kept safe for us all and especially for children. I call Kate Forbes to be followed by Ash Denham. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer, across the world today, there are children, individual children with names and faces who are entirely in the hands of merciless abusers. And it's markets and demand here in Scotland that is driving that trafficking across the world. Because those who access material online through the internet bear the responsibility for what they do. Last week, the Scottish Government, we discussed the Scottish Government's strategy on trafficking and exploitation. And today, I thank Gillian Martin for bringing this debate to the Scottish Parliament. But today's debate almost pushes it into an even darker place, if that is possible. Because today, paedophiles and abusers anywhere in the world can exploit children, most of whom are under the age of 10 years old. And those perpetrators of the abuse, those that drive the market, are not people that stand out when you walk by them on the street. And yet they are condoning, they are facilitating, they are driving demand across the world. And International Justice Mission has the cases, individual cases, um, on their website, individual stories, stories of children who have been deceived and trafficked um, for example, in the Philippines and enslaved in apartments and flats and exploited to a Western audience. The traffickers are often local, often family members or friends who, who benefit enormously from al allowing the, those that are in their charge, those that are family friends to be um, abused. And the victims themselves, the victims, 54% of the victims rescued by IGM were between the ages of 1 and 12 years old. And in fact, um, I spoke to uh, the Internet Watch um, Foundation last week who said that 2% of the um, child abuse cases that they were aware of, 2% of those that they assessed were under 2 years old. And the problem, presiding officer, as Gillian Martin has sketched out, 
is violence. The problem, according to the UN, four billion people live outside the protection of the law. That means they live outside the protection of public justice systems, outside the protection of police courts and a legal system. And that means that the police, the courts, the law does not protect people from violence. There's a lot of talk about poverty, but violence is the hidden crisis which is undermining our best global efforts to help the poor. And if each of us imagine what it would be like if we called the police at a time of need and no one responded and nobody turned up, that there was no way to get justice and we knew that violent criminals would have no fear from retribution. And that is um, captured very well in the book that Gillian Martin mentioned. But there is hope, and International Justice Mission is an organisation that brings hope because it doesn't do what most of us do, which is to discuss the issues. It actually goes into situations, searching day and night for individuals who are in need of rescue. IGM supports teams of lawyers, investigators, social workers and community activists who work full time to rescue victims and bring perpetrators to justice. The internet, it facilitates and it lifts the hand of restriction on some of the worst excesses of human evil. And it's so important that we get behind IGM's um, current campaign, Not On My Screen, to educate individuals like ourselves on the levels of abuse being generated by the Western market, by Scotland, to encourage individuals to take a direct stand against this abuse and to question the public's behaviour around internet activities. Because right now there are children, children with faces, children with names, that are at the mercy of a Western market. I call Ash Denham to be followed by Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I would also like to thank Gillian Martin for leading today's members' debate on Not On My Screen's campaign, which brings to light the hard and daunting truth of cyber sex trafficking, an epidemic that has enslaved countless children in developing countries to predators in the West, including here in the UK. And so be it on a computer screen or in a brothel, through a webcam or in person, sexual violence fuels human trafficking of all kinds. And we must remain aware and supportive of causes like Not On My Screen that are fighting for children who, in most cases, have no one else to fight for them, not even the law. And this lawlessness is the crux of the issue at hand. According to the UN, as uh, Kate Forbes mentioned, four billion people live outside the protection of the law. And this idea of living in a place where the justice system is so broken is often lost on us. Um, International Justice Mission founder Gary Hogan focuses on this in his important book um, mentioned by Gillian Martin, The Locust Effect, which I've read and I would strongly encourage others um, to do the same. He says, imagine what life would be like if you woke up every day with nothing shielding you from violence. Children are sexually abused. Westerners pay to see it on their computer screens because those who control the children live where there are laws that are not enforced. Sexual violence wreaks havoc on what Hogan calls a plague against the global poor because they live where court systems are not known for justice but instead for corruption. And some of the poorest men, women and children in the world are abused, exploited and enslaved in plain view of police forces that perpetuate rather than prevent violence and crime. As Hogan states in The Locust Effect, the most fundamental systems of law and order have been useless for so long in much of the developing world that violent criminals preying upon the poor don't even give it a second thought. Indeed, the book features many disturbing accounts of victims of violence and crime who seek justice but are faced with barrier after barrier. Um, in one example in the book, victims of forced labor, violent beatings and rape in an Indian brick factory waited a very long six and a half years to get to their full trial. When it was finally heard, with the victims pr providing corroborating testimony against the crimes, the judge who had heard the case was reassigned suddenly. And although he had time, he did not rule on the case. Instead, it was passed to a new judge who then acquitted the defendants without listening to any of the testimony or hearing any of the evidence. Those victims were robbed of legal justice. Those perpetrators walked free. And unfortunately, stories like this are all too common. And in fact, many crimes never even make it in front of a judge. 
Hogan says, and I quote, violence against women and girls in the developing world is against the law in nearly all the countries where it occurs. These laws, however, are simply not enforced. Most acts of violence against women are never investigated and perpetrators commit their crimes safe in the knowledge that they will never face arrest or punishment. End of quotation. International leaders agree that sexual violence is an epidemic that is targeting the poor. Its threatening presence seems to be everywhere, says Hogan, all the time and showing absolutely no mercy. But there must be mercy, mercy through justice. The scale of lawlessness in the world touches nearly half the global population. But organisations like IJM, which has a global team to rescue and protect millions across the world, progress is being made. So projects like Not On My Scream, that campaign has been very successful, rescuing 1,300 people from trafficking and making a huge 75% reduction of children available for sex across three Philippine cities. So it is entirely possible with investment and training to turn these criminal justice systems around. And this work brings mercy, justice, and also most importantly, hope. Because if we want to fight poverty and if we want development work to have that real impact, We've got to recognise the devastation that this locust of violence brings on society. And if we work together, we can build capacity that's needed to create and run these functioning criminal justice systems to give people the protection and the hope that they so desperately need. Thank you. I call Rhoda Grant to be followed by Rona Mackay. Um, can I also congratulate Gillian Martin for securing the debate and indeed bringing this really important topic to the Chamber? Um, those of us that intend, attended the International Justice Missions briefing on child sexual exploitation not on my screen could not be anything other than horrified at the extent of the terrible abuse. Sexual exploitation in any guise is simply wrong. We're all human and we need to respect each other. Slavery was supposed to be outlawed 200 years ago, yet if anything it's growing with people and children being exploited. The International Justice Mission told us how this exploitation was now happening live over the internet rather than just by distributing images and film. Both involve the abuse of children, but some images are easier to find than live a broadcast. With live online abuse, the authorities can tell that the connection was made, but if the exploitation was not recorded, it's difficult to prove it and prosecute users. Last week I met Internet Watch, the Internet Watch Foundation, who trace and track child sexual exploitation. They report websites to the authorities in many countries, including our own, in order that they can prosecute them, and they also have that content removed. They're able to trace the use of images, some images being used over and over and over again by tagging them, and they know who has viewed them, they can prove it. And they also have those images removed from the internet using that same tagging system. Children who've been exploited have had their lives damaged by that abuse. But how much more difficult for them to recover from this when they know that the images of their own abuse are still out there circulating and being viewed by abusers the world over. The ability to tag them, find them and remove them helps end this continuing abuse but it also ensures that those who view those images are also held accountable. They, like the International Justice Mission, are alarmed at the use of Skype, FaceTime and other such apps for the purpose of child sexual exploitation. This is horrific that abusers cannot, um, and abusers cannot try and solve their consciences by telling themselves that the abuse was carried out by somebody else and that they were simply tripping over these images as they surfed the net. These acts of abuse are now being carried out at the direct instigation of the viewer. A facilitator, normally a family friend or indeed family member or someone known to the child, has groomed the child and coerced them, and they are also guilty of this abuse. They believe they're safe. There's no record of the abuse. However, it's possible to prove the connection, if not the content of the call. They believe themselves safe from prosecution because the content cannot be screened. They forget that there will always be a record of the call. That child knows what happened on that call and most likely so do many other people. Some of them will be involved in the 
exploitation themselves, but it's also likely that other children will be present, also facing abuse, and they will be party to that event. There is therefore still the ability to gather evidence for a prosecution. It's only by zero tolerance that we tackle this abuse. We must also recognise the link between child sexual exploitation and adult sexual exploitation. It wasn't a great shock to me that a disproportionately high number of paedophilia websites were hosted in the Netherlands. They have legalised adult sexual exploitation. The exploitation of any human being is simply wrong. And where it is tolerated for adults, it becomes less of a stretch to tolerate it for children. Therefore, countries that allow exploitation of adults inadvertently become havens for those who would exploit children. We need to ensure that no sexual exploitation is ever tolerated. And more than that, it needs to be tackled in all its forms to create a safe and equal society for all of us, most especially for our children. Rona Mackay, followed by Finlay Carson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I thank Gillian Martin for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Um, since being elected, like uh, all colleagues here, I've attended many events, all of which have been interesting and enlightening. But the event I attended earlier this year, hosted by MSP Jenny Mara, who I understand has done admirable work in the field of child sexual exploitation and cyber sex trafficking, had a la lasting effect on me and I found it disturbing and powerful, as, as I know the rest of my colleagues did. I came away thinking two things. Firstly, I was shocked that this could be happening to children throughout the world, including Scotland. And secondly, I was in awe of the amazing work being done by the International Justice Mission and the specialist police officers in Police Scotland and the National Crime Agency who are dedicated to eradicating this horrible scourge. These officers who are protecting our children see things on a daily basis no individual should ever have to witness. For this is truly the darker side of the internet and of human nature. Cyber sex trafficking of children is a growing and devastating form of modern day slavery, unimaginable before the digital, digital age and involves the live streaming sexual abuse of children viewed over the internet. As Julian Martin said in her powerful speech, the majority of victims being abused and exploited are often the poorest and most vulnerable. The IGM also partners with justice systems throughout the developing world to bring criminals to justice, restore survivors and strengthen justice, justice systems. The work they do is essential in preventing violence against vulnerable in individuals throughout the world who have no access to justice otherwise. Uh, in an effort to raise awareness, they've launched the Not On My Screen campaign. But this isn't just an international issue. Scottish children are becoming the subjects of online abuse in increasing numbers. Last year, more than 30 million indecent images of Scottish children were uncovered online over a six-week period. Think about that, 30 million and it could just be the tip of the iceberg. 523 children were identified as potential victims of abuse, with some victims being as young as the age of three. Uh, police crime statistics have shown that there's not one of our constituencies in this parliament where online child sexual exploitation is not an issue, so it's here on our doorsteps. The Not On My Screen campaign aims to educate individuals on the alarming levels of abuse and encourages everyone to take a stand against it. IGM is the largest anti-slavery organization in the world. As internet access increases globally, victims can be exploited anywhere, even with just a mobile phone. In the Philippines, cyber sex trafficking of children is exponentially growing, and Philipp Philippine authorities are receiving excess of 6,000 referrals every month, many of which have connections in the UK. Because the trafficking has been driven by online users in Western countries, including Scotland. IGM programmes around the world are currently protecting more than 21 million people from violence and slavery, and 54% are aged just 1 to 12 years old. It's important to remember that the perpetrators are often individuals you wouldn't pick out on the street. They could be sitting next to you on a train. They do not have I am an abuser tattooed on their foreheads. That's why we need public engagement to tackle this problem through awareness and reporting within communities. Some of the most effective information gathered by the police in online sexual exploitation cases comes through reporting by family or friends and therefore it's vital that the public can engage with this issue and we all share responsibility in fighting it. 
IGM has re recommended establishing a working group to consider what action to take regarding online CSC specifically. Resorting a, resourcing a data fusion centre addressing online CSC would also be a step forward. And lastly, add your voice to the campaign, tweet and use the hashtag not on my screen to help bring awareness to the issue. Presiding officer, we must protect these innocent children from this horrif horrific exploitation. It is our duty and responsibility in the name of humanity. Finlay Carson, followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'd like to begin by congratulating Jen Gillian Martin on securing this important debate. Um, I thought it might be useful to fully set out what cyber sex trafficking actually is, but I, I'm sure that the people in the chamber here know exactly that it's uh, the live streaming exploitation of children uh, viewed over the internet. Pedophiles and predators, anyone in the world can now search online and wire a secure payment to an adult who sets up the show. Boys and girls, some under the age of two years old, are abused or for, are forced to perform sexual acts in front of a webcam. The more abusive the show, the more the customer pays. Unlike bars or brothels with a permanent address, cyber sex trafficking victims can be moved and abused in any location with an internet connection and a webcam, or as we've heard, just with a mobile phone. Cyber sex trafficking has become a terrifying cottage industry with high profit margins. Children should be able to grow up free from the horrors of sexual abuse, exploitation and trafficking, something that should go without saying, but sadly that's not the case. As we become more digitised as a society, when more of our day-to-day -day life is spent online, it is more important than ever that we have governments to, that have the, safe, the right safeguards in place to protect our children and young people and those most vulnerable in society from online exploitation. Cyber sex trafficking and online abuse of children must be one of the most abhorrent crimes imaginable. The IGM campaign, Not On My Screen, is vital in highlighting these dreadful crimes. And we must recognise as MSPs that this is going on. We must ensure that our police and intelligence services are doing everything possible to shut down these websites. And we have the tools to do so and to bring the full weight of the law against those who are taking part in these disgusting crimes. Governments both in the UK and Scotland are taking action on this important issue. In February, the Home Secretary announced the delivery of a £40 million package of government measures to protect children and young people from sexual abuse, exploitation and trafficking and to crack down on offenders. It includes the launch of a new centre of expertise in child sexual abuse and an extra 20 million for the National Crime Agency to tackle online child sexual exploitation. 2.2 million for organisations working with children at risk of trafficking and the launch of the independent child trafficking advocates. Deputy Presiding Officer, the internet is a wonderful resource, but sadly, as we've heard, it has its dark side. IGM highlights the crimes that are committed upon children and it's not easy reading, but we mustn't shy away from it. Cyber sex trafficking is a rapidly growing problem as internet access increases worldwide. This is not an easy crime to tackle. It's often seen as low risk and easy to do. And I'm totally in support of the aims of the IGM to educate individuals in alarming levels of use being generated by the Western market, including here in Scotland, and encouraging people to take a direct stand against this abuse. It's incumbent on us to work together as legislators to ensure that every step is taken to protect our young children online. There's often an outcry when we suggest, when government suggests there should be more access to people's internet logs, a cry of breach of their human rights. Perhaps by demanding our human rights, we're actually abusing the human rights of those children who get abused. And we need to look very carefully at how these uh, privacy and encryption methods are now used and how they can actually make it more difficult for the perpetrators to be caught. I and my colleagues commit to ensuring we do as much as we can so the internet can be harnessed by everybody for the incredible tool that it is and not abused by the few and these sickening crimes as highlighted by Not On My Screen campaign. The last of the contributions in the open part of the debate is from Stuart Stevenson. 
Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer, and uh, congratulations to Julie and uh, Martin in bringing uh, this important topic to us today. Uh, but particularly, I, I thank those who've helped to brief me. Uh, Barrister Annabel Turner came to see me yesterday uh, and uh, briefed me on behalf of the International Justice Mission. It's worth having a wee think about what they're about. She, like many of the people who work for them, professionally qualified, providing services to that organization entirely pro bono without any uh, financial benefit accruing to them. And it's indicative of a caring society that people are prepared to do that. But this is a subject which will quite properly uh, motivate people to do their very best uh, to deal with it. Cyber sex trafficking is not an easy subject to discuss. Uh, the people involved uh, are very nasty people indeed. But um, I, until comparatively recent times in my constituency, had uh, at Peterhead Prison, Scotland's serious sex offenders prison. Uh, sex offenders sentenced to four years or more in prison, 300 or so of them uh, in my constituency in a prison, essentially cut off uh, from friends, family and people elsewhere. And it's worth having a little think about those people uh, who were in that prison. They are a quite different kind of criminal from the kind of criminal you would meet if you go to Socht and if you go to Barlene. Much cleverer, much more socially competent, much more convincing. They're able to use their social skills and their knowledge and their expertise uh, to perpetrate their foul uh, crimes. They're able to suck in other people uh, to protect them, to create a cocoon uh, around their offending behaviours. I know of one particular sex offender who was in Peterhead Prison, whose parents were so convinced of their son's innocence uh, that before the police arrived at a particular locus, uh, the parents had been cleaning the blood off the walls and repainting rooms. And these were parents whom you would have thought were the most upright members of society, but caught by the duplicity of a criminal involved in sexual abuse. Not online, in the particular case that I'm talking about. Now, we've had some references, uh, most recently by Finlay, about technical measures that we might take. It is worth saying um, that we could get ISPs, all our traffic goes through internet service providers, to look at the traffic that's going through and detect what's happening. But the honest and unfortunate truth is that simply won't work. Because if you encrypt what's going through, you don't know what's in the encrypted package. And yet encryption is an important part of protecting certain kinds of data on the internet. So we can't ban it uh, on the internet. It simply isn't possible. I suspect, uh, presiding officer, that we're back to the Al Capone approach. Al Capone was a gangster in Chicago in a very, very corrupt city for some seven years until in 1931, it was concluded the only way to get him was that he hadn't paid his tax bills on his ill-gotten gains. And I think that's the one way that we might be able to make some progress, and that is to track the money and where it's going because it's difficult to transmit money uh, without there being a mechanism for doing so. I'll just leave, and there isn't time to go into uh, the issue of uh, Bitcoin and, uh, uh, and chains that uh, go with that. But even there, it should be uh, possible. I too uh, very much uh, respect what's being done by the Internet Watch Foundation, taking down sites as they do. But what we have to do is get right back to the genesis of these sites and make it economically inviable uh, for them to do it. Uh, I met Christoph Clausen, as I think others did uh, last week from the IWF, and uh, was very interested in what he has to say. I've no magic solution, none of us here do, but I think having a debate like this at least alerts us to the problem. That is a good start, um, and uh, I commend uh, Gillian for bringing it to our attention, allowing us to explore this important topic. Presiding officer. I call Mark MacDonald to respond to the debate. Around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I begin, like others have, by congratulating my friend Gillian Martin on bringing this important debate to the Chamber. And um, Gillian struck a note of caution in her speech where she said that this was a very hard issue for her to discuss uh, in the Chamber. 
I don't think that's something any of us should ever feel in any way apologetic for. The fact that we find this difficult, I think, is essentially uh, a reaffirmation of our humanity, that this, revuls that this creates that sense of revulsion that makes it difficult for us to speak about these issues. But speak about them we must, uh, and therefore bringing this debate to the Chamber, I think, is exceptionally important. But the point has been made by a number of members this evening that speaking about this issue, uh, the mere fact of, of, of talking about it isn't in and of itself uh, enough either. We have to ensure that we are taking appropriate actions where we can uh, and when we can. And I'll try and touch on some of the areas where the Scottish Government is taking action uh, within the powers and the remit that we have available to us. But we stand uh, supportive uh, of the work uh, of the International Justice Mission and also of the Inter Internet Watch Foundation, who have been mentioned this evening, um, and their work to try and eradicate uh, child sexual exploitation and the abuse of children that is uh, often perpetrated uh, and perpetuated uh, as a consequence uh, of the digital world in which we now live. And many members uh, touched on the challenges that are faced as a consequence of the internet, the balance that there is between the positive impact that the internet has had in terms of it making it much easier for us to experience connectivity across the world. It was a point that uh, Gordon Lindhurst touched upon, but also the dark side that is often created as a consequence of that, in that it makes it much easier for those uh, with... Uh, with bad intention uh, to be able to make those connections uh, as well uh, without ever having to actually come into physical contact with one another. And that was another point that was raised during the course of the debate. And I think uh, Rhoda Grant made an important point um, that while, um, as has been spoken about, the individuals may feel that the crime they are committing is one that uh, does not have a victim because of the lack of physical proximity. Um, it was made by, by almost all members that there are victims. But Rhoda Grant made the important point that uh, it also is not a crime that is without evidence. And uh, Stuart Stevenson, I think, rightly touched on some of the challenges that can be faced in terms of being able to uh, track some of that internet use and, and where exactly uh, those connections are being made. But also made the important point um, that if one follows the money, often that can be the means by which uh, to catch those who are perpetrating these offences. Now, here in Scotland, uh, we take uh, a very strong approach um, to uh, having a, a position of um, trying to support individuals who find themselves being exploited. And Gillian Martin made, I think, the very important point that while much of what has been spoken about in the debate and was spoken about by the Inter International Justice Mission has focused on those children uh, in other parts of the world who uh, find themselves being uh, abused uh, for um, the gratification of a Western audience. Um, we must not forget the fact that there are examples, and P Operation Latisse highlighted examples, uh, of children in our own midst who are also being abused uh, over the internet and that abuse uh, must also uh, be cracked down upon. And that's why I was uh, grateful to see Police Scotland's Operation Latisse targeting uh, those individuals who are responsible uh, for sharing those images uh, online uh, and creating some of that, um, that, that material here uh, in Scotland. <clears throat> we take um, the approach uh, in relation to human trafficking and exploitation through our Human Trafficking and Exploitation Act, which introduces a single offence covering the trafficking of both adults and children for all forms of exploitation. Um, and uh, in March of 2016, we published an update of the National Action Plan to prevent and tackle child sexual exploitation, which set a range of actions to meet agreed outcomes to tackle that form of sexual abuse. Uh, and as has been highlighted on the 30th of May, the first human trafficking and exploitation strategy was published, setting out how we can get better at identifying and supporting victims, identifying perpetrators and disrupting their activity and raising awareness across the board. That strategy makes clear that support and protection for child victims of trafficking in Scotland should be provided with, within the context of Scotland's child protection system and our getting it right for every child approach to improving outcomes for children and young people. The government has also funded Stop It Now Scotland to develop and test a prevention toolkit which can be used to help people prevent child sexual abuse before it occurs. Uh, and we're also providing funding for SACRO for their challenging harmful online images and child exploitation or CHOICE programme. 
It's a pilot programme suitable for those downloading illegal images of children from the internet, uh, where there is a low risk of sexual harm and the offences are non-contact in nature. The service is aimed at males aged 18 and over who may be considered suitable to be diverted from prosecution or who are subject to a structured deferred sentence community payback order or other community order or license. Uh, we will engage with the University of Edinburgh and Stop It Now Scotland as they undertake research on deterrence to viewing online indecent images of children. Because I think that's one of the important points that we need to focus on as well in this presiding officer is that while absolutely we want to ensure that the individuals who perpetrate these offences are caught and are brought to justice and I think Ash Denham highlighted some of the challenges that we face in relation to that in the way in which um, justice uh, can be uh, delivered uh, in other countries. Uh, it would not be for me to uh, talk about um, how other countries should uh, run their own justice systems, but I do think that there is a concern out there that children uh, who are subject to this exploitation, and Kate Forbes highlighted some of the numbers who are identified as living outside the protection of the law, I think we do need to take a very strong line uh, that those children should, in the first instance, be believed, and secondly, should have access to justice. But in and of itself, presiding officer, I recognise that isn't going to be uh, enough and we have to ensure that we also are doing everything that we can to restrict and reduce the demand that exists for those images. Because if we turn off the demand, we restrict the supply and we make it less likely that these children will be abused because the demand for those images will simply not be there. Now, I recognise that in Scotland, we will probably only be talking about a small number of the global total of individuals uh, who are going to be downloading and accessing these images, but we have a part to play in relation to that. And the Scottish Government stands ready alongside our partners to do all that we can to ensure that both uh, the demand for these images and the supply of these images is tackled at source. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting.